You need a hand to hold someone what loves you. Hey, you need a hand, it's you. Go on, what your... What are you doing, Mr Armand? Oh, it's the new unisex display model, made in Japan. Do you like that? It's a fella. Yeah. <clears throat> like that. It's a bird. <laughs> that looks a bit odd. You all right? I've got me rackle wealth mixed up with me twiggies. <laughs> oh, you are awful. <laughs> good morning, Mr Grace. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Everybody's not here, Mr Grace. Uh, Mr Grace, is, Mr Grace is stopping at every floor to welcome people back from their holidays. Oh, did you and your secretary have a nice time on your yacht, Mr Grace? No, no, it was all up and down, up and down. <laughs> up and down. Rough weather. Well, I wouldn't like to be anything else, would it? His <laughs> <laughs> money and my body. <laughs> I think I'd rather have his money. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Harmon. Morning, Mr. Rumbold. Did you and Mrs. Rumbold have a nice holiday? Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, we went to the Coconut Islands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to your head? I, uh, <clears throat> I got hit by a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, get this model yeah. off the floor until it's dressed, Mr. Harmon. The customers will be coming in before long. Yeah, you can't, girl. Hold my hand, I'm a stranger in paradise. Come on, girl. <laughs> ah, Captain Peacock, you're all uh, cutting it rather fine today. What's this? Oh, it's from your doctor. <laughs> This is to certify that S. Peacock is suffering from a throat condition acquired during a yodelling holiday in Switzerland. <laughs> I have prescribed for him laryngwex pills, a gargle and nodule gone throat spray. Yes, although fit for work, he should use his voice as little as possible. Dear me, won't the customers think it rather strange if you don't speak to them? I find it even more strange if I do speak to them. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peacock. You must admit it's an extraordinary effect. If I use this throat spray, it temporarily cures it. What happened to your head? Coconut fell on it. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> well, that's very funny. Uh, when does he think you'll be better? Well, in about a week, sir. Uh, unhappily, there are one or two uh, unfortunate side effects. Watch uh, <laughs> <laughs> out! <laughs> like that. Oh, never mind, I'll get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, well, we'll send out for some more. <laughs> How long does this stuff last? Not very long. <laughs> Good heavens, what's happened to your heart? <laughs> My what? Your heart on your head. What's the matter with your voice? Oh, well, I spent my holiday taking elocution and deportment lessons. Good morning, Mr. Rumbold. <laughs> morning, uh, Miss Brahms. <laughs> I must say, it's a remarkable transformation. Yes, well, I heard my voice on one of their tapes, and I must say, it didn't half sound dead common. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is the matter with you, Mr. Lucas? I burnt my feet in Skegness. In Skegness? <laughs> well, there was this female acrobat, you see, and she took me back to her flat. <laughs> she was just showing me how to juggle with a couple of grapefruit and a cucumber standing on my head when her father came in. Well, what's this got to do with burnt feet? Well, he's a fire eater on the pier. <laughs> he took one swig of paraffin from his zip flask, flicked his ronson, breathed out, and it was towering inferno with me going head first down the fire escape. <laughs> if he hadn't been short of breath coming up the stairs, I wouldn't be able to sit down either. <laughs> It's a pity you didn't singe your hair. It looks dreadful. Yes. I'll get it cut right away, Mr. Uh, Rumble. No, you will not, Mr. Mm. Lucas. You will do it in your coffee yes. break. <laughs> <sighs> I trust yeah. you're not catching a cold, Mr. Lucas. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. It's very unhealthy putting your trousers on after they've been slung off the end of the jetty. <laughs> makes any funny cracks. This is a plastic cover. My nose caught a touch of the sun on the Costa Blanca, and this ear contains soothing ointment, 
which must be kept on as long as possible. Now, I wouldn't take it off, Mrs Slocum. It balances the rest of your face. <laughs> <laughs> when I want advice from you, I'll ask for it. Samson. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the nose, I trust you had an enjoyable holiday? I did not. You know the reputation these Spaniards have for bottom pinching and jumping on defenceless ladies at night on the beach. Was it all true? No, none of it. <laughs> As you can see, I've come straight from the airport. And you are very nearly late, Mr Humphreys. Oh, you're lucky to have me here at all. I got a customs officer that was working to rule. What are you looking for, I said? We're on the trail of an international gang of rhinoceros horn smugglers, he said. <laughs> well, I'm not hiding one where you're looking, I said. <laughs> Behold, all isn't big enough. Anyway, I've only been to Guernsey. Well, you can't serve customers dressed like that. I'm surprised they let him into Guernsey dressed like that. <laughs> I've got my other clothes in here. In a couple of ticks, I shall be back to my normal self. <laughs> well, as near as I can be. <laughs> Captain Peacock, how nice to see you. Did you have a pleasant holiday? Yes, very nice. <laughs> I'm going to take the mickey. I'm sorry I am. Don't, don't go, Mr Humphreys. I have a small announcement to make. Uh, excuse me, Mr Rumble. Before you start spouting, I've got Captain Peacock throat sway from the chemist counter. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> he got a throat infection during a yodelling holiday. <laughs> Has that uh, made it all right? Yes, uh, thank you, sir, for the time being. <laughs> I caught it during the Alpine horn competition. <laughs> Unfortunately, my team were all using the same horn, and I was in last, and in the excitement, I forgot to wipe the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can happen when you're in a hurry. <laughs> As I was saying, I uh, have a small announcement to make. Yeah, help us, Mr Lucas. <clears throat> now, as you know, Mr Tebbs is taking over as head of the gentleman's department. And uh, I must say that Mr Humphreys was considered for the position, but the board felt that he was too young. I'm disappointed, but flattered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr Tebbs, are you there? I'm here, Mr Rumpold, waiting and eager. This is Mr. Tebbs. Good morning. Good morning. I expect he's known to most of you. Ten years in bathroom fittings, three in footwear, almost entirely responsible for modernising greeting cards and novelties, and finally, four years in bedding. Uh, you've left out soft furnishings. Have I? Yes. That was between bathroom fittings and footwear. How long were you there? Eighteen months. Uh, Mr. Tebbs was also eighteen months in soft furnishings. Yes. I resigned. When they introduced bean bags. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, with a record like that, I'm sure we're all honoured to have him with us. Now, this is Mr. Humphreys, your senior assistant. I'm sure if there's anything you can't find, he will find it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and if Mr. Humphreys can't find it, it won't be worth looking for. <laughs> That's Mr. Lucas. Now, uh, Mrs. Slocum, I expect you already know. We have not actually met, but we do move to each other. Move? Hey, when we see each other across the store, we... we move. I always thought he had a stiff neck. <laughs> uh, this is Miss Brahms, ladies' junior. Delighted to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. <laughs> Captain Peacock, of course, I know of old. He's quite a legend, Grace Brothers. Very nice to have you on our floor, Percival. Thank you, Stephen. They're as thick as thieves already. <laughs> ah, there's the bell. Places, everybody, and good luck, Mr. Tibbs. Thank you. This way, Mr. Tibbs. I'm sure you'll find everything runs quite smoothly. If there are any little changes you'd like to make, don't hesitate to say so. <laughs> oh, may I present you with a new tape? Thank you. I usually work at this end, and young Mr. Lucas looks after that end. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. No, I'm afraid that won't do at all. I will work at that end, and Mr. Lucas will work on this side of you. There we are. That's much better. <laughs> you see, it's only a little detail, but very important. We must look after the little things. Big things take care of themselves. <laughs> Isn't that the way of the world? <laughs> 
Your nose is all swelled, Mrs Slocum. Well, I bust the blister on a sangria goblet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a customer. You deal with her while I make repairs. Good morning. Good morning, madam. I'm looking for a suit to wear mainly for town. Oh, yes, we've a frightfully nice one in brown for a round and a bite, 40 pounds. How dare you try to imitate me, you <laughs> cheeky little bounder! Miss <laughs> Brown, I think you'd better drop the posh accent during working hours. Well, how did she know I weren't one of her? <laughs> because the quality do wear their bosoms itched up round their ear holes. <laughs> Well, in that case, you should be top of next year's honours list. Get a brush and sweep out the fitting rooms. They're very mucky. And it's the last time I discuss my blister with you on a friendly level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's much better, Mr Humphreys. Quite dapper. Did you get that suit off, Peg? Well, yes and no. My mother shortened the sleeves and I've got a friend who's a wizard with gussets. <laughs> Quite a contrast to Mr Lucas. That handkerchief is not up to my standard. Does the boy know how to flute? Well, he has been shown, Mr Tebbs, but he's very forgetful. <laughs> Let us all do it together. Oh, These yeah. handkerchiefs on the counter. Grasp the centre with a forefinger and thumb. Lift. Prepare to flute. Flute! <laughs> Mr Humphrey, I think you'll find a little starch in the water. We'll put that way. It's nice to know there's a cure. <laughs> Bend. Reverse. Insert. And flare. Now, that's how I want to see them every morning. Just so. <laughs> you know, I once actually sold seven simulated antique silent flush toilet suites in one day. They still talk about it in bathroom fittings. <laughs> I had no idea it was so exciting down there, as you, Mr. Humphrey. <laughs> I think it's the way Mr. Tebb tells it. Mm. Ah, I'm glad you're all here. I've, uh, I've just come from the boardroom, but I was attending a very, very important meeting. Yes, we thought there was something up, so we had your toad in the hole put back in the oven. Yes. <laughs> you know, you've probably all read that it's to be a royal visit to the borough. Now, it appears that they're planning a walkabout on Thayer Street. Now, this will take the royal party right past Grace Brothers' main entrance. No. What an honour. Just think of it. They'll be walking past our entrance. I can just imagine it, can't you? There they are, walking down the street, when suddenly the Queen nudges Philip. Do you know where we are, she says? No, he says. Surprise me. This is Grace Brothers' department store, where rumour has it one man sold seven lavatories in one day. <laughs> I ought to pop in and give him the award for industry. <laughs> find these young people with their communist attitudes very tiresome. Well, Mr Lucas may well joke, but if the schedule permits, the royal party may very well come into Grace Brothers for a little informal shopping. Oh, the Queen in our store! <laughs> well, of course, we have had a Queen here before. <laughs> what exactly are you suggesting, Captain Peacock? Queen Mary accompanied King George V as part of the Jubilee celebrations. Did they buy anything? His Majesty did express interest in a Homburg, and uh, naturally it was given to him. What, without paying? It's protocol, Miss Brown. If they express interest in something, it is automatically given hey, to they them. They might have Charles with them. He might express an interest in Miss Brown's, and we'll have to send her up to Sandringham. <laughs> <laughs> I have read that royals have married commoners before. Commoners, Miss Brown's? But not dead common commoners. <laughs> to me today. Well, you was very rude concerning my bust. And I'm very sensitive about it. That's a very ticklish subject, isn't it, Mrs? <laughs> You're a very naughty boy. <laughs> Do you think that the royal party might actually come into our department? Well, uh, our orders are to be prepared. You see, so young Mr Grace wants us to be acquainted with the, with the correct procedure. 
Uh, I therefore have to ask you all if you will volunteer to come in after hours. Speaking for the ladies, it will be an honour, and I am unanimous in that. I agree entirely. And speaking on behalf of the men, we are ready and willing. <laughs> that just leaves you, Mr Humphreys. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum's right. You are a naughty bully. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Tebbs. Yes. Has your department rehearsed what you intend to do? Well, I hear that our Mr. Humphreys has a rare talent in these matters, so I've rather left everything to him. Mr. Humphreys. Yes. Young Mr. Gray shall bring the royal couple up in the royal lift, and I thought it'd be rather nice when they arrive at the department if, they, if we give them a polite and loyal round of applause, like this. Oh, yes, yes. Charming. I like what I'm hearing. Oh, good. <laughs> no, don't answer that. That's the signal that they're on their way up. <laughs> Mrs Slocum and Captain Peacock have consented to stand in for the royal couple. <laughs> Places, everybody. Yes. <clears throat> Hang on a minute, your royal highnesses. Hang on. <laughs> Harmon, this red carpet will have to be at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, all right, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> If that had been the real thing, you'd be in the Tower of London. Just leave it where it is for now. You can't come up in the same lift as them. Oh, I see. I'm rubbish, aren't I? Let me tell you, it's people like me that stand and cheer the wave flags as they gallop past in their coach. You're not in the coach with them, though, are no. you? Right, we'll carry on. Now, then. Uh, start again. Start again. <laughs> <laughs> Now they won't lift. But you know, Mr. Grace, he's gone off with the Queen. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Your Majesty, my elbow must have caught the butt. Well, accidents will happen. <laughs> It'd be better if we started again inside the lift. Yes, but hurry up. Now, all of you, stand by for the applause. Are the royal couple ready? Oh, get on with it. <laughs> Get the sword, just undo the bell. That's not quite the effect we were looking for. <laughs> Title us to buy appointment. <laughs> Shall we start again? No, carry on. I should like to introduce you to the gentleman of the gentleman's department. Mr. Grace, you can't do it from up there. Well, someone will have to get me down then. <laughs> Come on. Mrs. Slocum, the Queen doesn't dash upstairs to bring Mr. Grace. Down. <laughs> I'll stand next to your Prince Consort. Mr. Rumpold, will you help him? By the time he gets down, they'll be back at the palace. <laughs> Look, wouldn't it be better if you stayed in your office and we could tell you all about it when it was over? No, I'm going to be here. Give me a chair. Oh, but Mr Grace, you cannot sit down in the presence of the monarch. Well, it's either that or fall down. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. We understand. Hey, you are, Mr Grace. Now, then, say your words. What were they? Well, you wrote them down. Oh, yes, so I did. I wonder what oh, I did come here. There we are. <laughs> now, that's your gas bill. <laughs> Fifi Le Fan, ring top bell and go straight up to the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you couldn't get down those stairs. <laughs> I haven't got my reading glasses. After me, it gives me great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. To welcome you. To Grace Brothers Gents. To Grace Brothers Gents. Department. Department. Ia, <laughs> how come she's been introduced to the gents first? Yes, I was wondering that. Yes, supposing she wants to go to the ladies first? Well, we'll just have to hang around for a bit. <laughs> now, we'll take it from where the royal couple approach the gents' department. Right, hang on, let me get to my position. Right, go. 
Stop. Wait. Men's wear. <laughs> oh, hello, Mother. No, love, no, I can't talk now, because I'm rehearsing for the Queen's visit. No, not to your place, dear. No, here. Uh, Grace Brothers. Grace Brothers, where I work. The vicar's with you. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I can't help it if his church roof's leaking. Look, I'll tell you what. Under my mattress, there's an old football sock full of pound notes. <laughs> no, don't give him the money. Give him the sock. Come and roll it up and bung it in the roof of the church and pray for a drought. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, where were we? My husband and I was about to approach the gentleman's department, and could you please get a move on? These shoes are playing havoc with my bunny. Uh, <laughs> oh, Miss Lucas. Mr. Lucas, you're going too far. All you've got to do is bow. Your Majesty, it is a great privilege and an honour for a humble star such as ours. Mr. Rumbo, <laughs> you can't bow with that plaster on your head. It's macabre. <laughs> Do I have to make some sort of gesture of respect? Well, if you're going to bow, we'll have to cover it up. Excuse me. Here. <laughs> Control yourself, my dear. Now, carry on. <laughs> Here, follow me. <laughs> now, let's be serious. This is a moment you're going to remember for the rest of your lives. Right. Now, then, you will start from the foot of the stairs. Go back a bit. There. Mr. Grease. Mr. Grease. The Queen's here. Bloody hell. <laughs> Just a minute, let me get in position. Right, Mr. Grace, now I do your speech. Something, something, something. <laughs> something, something. Something. <laughs> Your Majesty, it is a great honour and a pride. <laughs> I won't have it, I won't have it. You must do it properly. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, now you're the Queen and you're him, so let's have a bit of loyal decorum. <laughs> Now, come on, to the top of the stairs again. Come on, come on. Give me a... Oh, never mind you. Right. <laughs> Lovely. Now then, dignity. A disdainful smile. <laughs> Chest out. Not you, Mrs. Slocum. Good <laughs> line. Good line. I don't want to interrupt, but I lock in the store. You've got 30 seconds to get out. Oh, <laughs> He's already in the bother. You ladies from display should have finished by now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like the outfit, sir? The Grace Brothers traditional lift outfit. Unfortunately, the people what used to wear it was traditionally smaller. <laughs> I don't think the royal party want to see your combinations, Mr. Harmon. Haven't you got any longer socks? Uh, no, Mr. Rumble, but if it pleases you, I'll go over them with black aerosol. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you look very smart, Captain Peacock. Thank you, sir. I hope the Queen don't mind the smell of mothballs. <laughs> <laughs> Where is everybody? We're free. <laughs> <laughs> and ready for inspection. Ah, very nice, Percival. Oh, uh, oh God. <laughs> Sir Humphreys, is it necessary for you to stand like that? Like what, Captain Peacock? Like that? Yes, it is. Why, Mr Humphreys? Because I've got a big moth hole just there. <laughs> How I got through all those balls, I shall never know. <laughs> Probably bat moth. <laughs> so it is necessary for me to stand like this. But, Mr Humphreys, won't you find that a bit of a strain? Funnily enough, it feels quite natural. <laughs> uh, ladies, are you ready? <laughs> oh, Miss Brown, that's, uh, that's quite eye-catching. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, where, where's Mrs. Slocum? Oh, she's just fixing her cornet. Me coronet. <laughs> <laughs> Captain P. 
Peacock, I hope you don't mind the sash. Only I didn't want to be confused with my junior. Don't worry, Mrs. Logan, there's no danger of that. <laughs> How near are they? Oh, it's from the BBC. I, I got me tranny here. I, I, I'll plug it in. Hang on. Blimey, no. Well, I never. Don't that make you feel proud? Well, what's happening? Pardon? What's happening? <laughs> the Queen has never looked more radiant. She's gracefully attired in a pink floral chiffon with hat made of large, bold swirls of a similar material. Ooh, and a simple row of pearls. And a rock on her finger worth four million quid. <laughs> well, where are they now? Uh, just past the bus stop. Hang on, the Prince Philip's paused. He's shaking hands with an Arab. <laughs> and they're looking in the window of Lally and Willits. I hope they're not going to that cheap store. Why not? They've got a special offer on lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go to my office. We shall be able to see them from there, from the window. Oh, Come on. Oh, we can get excited. <laughs> oh, there she is. Hello. Oh, Miss Brahms, control yourself. Oh, the swells on a hat are bold, aren't they? Why does the prince always have his hands clasped behind his back? Well, perhaps he's got a moth hole as well. <laughs> Isn't that charming? Look, a little girl is giving her a bouquet. And now the Queen has given it to Philip. Oh, Philip's handed it to the Mayor. <laughs> the Mayor's given it to an alderman. He's given it to a policeman on an horse. Oh, yeah, and the policeman's given it to the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I think the horse is enjoying it more than anybody. <laughs> oh, let's have the commentary. Yeah, here. And on this lovely sunny day, the royal party pause once again in the high street to shake hands with the crowd. And then giving a cheery wave and led by the Queen, they cross the road heading towards the entrance of Grace Brothers Department Store. I wonder if they'll go inside. They're going to come in! I know it! They're going to come in! In a couple of minutes we could all be shaking hands. Well, mine are shaking already. The moment they come in, back to your posts. The royal party are pausing at the entrance of Grace Brothers. Uh, there seems to be a whispered conversation. They're probably wondering whether they should go in or not. Prince Philip is nodding. Look out! Oh, I him by an inch. <laughs> There's obviously been a change of plan. The royal party are running to the car. <laughs> They're in the car, and the police are clearing the way through the crowd, and the car accelerates into the distance, and they're gone, leaving behind the happy, waving, cheering bystanders. <laughs>